Hello, my name is Daniel Villeman. I'm a lecturer at the School of Health Humanities at Peking University in Beijing, China. Today I'll be talking about using art as research in medical education, and this is based on a course that I developed in 2015 uh, when I first joined the School of Health Humanities, uh, then known as the Institute for Medical Humanities. And this project is an extension of uh, this, this notion of using art in medical education as a form of research, uh, as, a, as a way of, uh, of course, artistic expression, but also enabling students to reflect upon uh, how, how health can be communicated visually. So understanding those dynamics. It's one thing to be able to you know, examine an artwork and, or to look at an uh, a anatomical drawing, but it's another thing to actually engage in that process of art creation. And so I'll be giving you some background on that today. So I'll be switching between video and the PowerPoint presentation. So first I'll give you some uh, background on, this, on the history of uh, art in education in China and then give you some background on the, uh, the course itself. And then at the end, we'll look at some examples from two projects uh, by, that were two, by two medical students that were conducted last year and the year before. In the Song Dynasty, which is from 960 AD to around 1279 AD, uh, the Chinese court established the imperial examinations. And this was a meritocratic system whereby anyone across China could sit for the exams. Uh, it would take many, many years uh, to, to undertake all of the learning required for this. Uh, but it was an open system. Anyone could gain entrance to civil service. Now, this system ran for almost a thousand years. It was uh, abolished in 1905. And this system was very much focused on both ethics, namely Confucian ethics, and the arts. So aspiring civil servants were required to be both highly versed in the classics, but they also had to be skilled at poetry and calligraphy. So now, whereas the civil service examinations integrated both ethics and aesthetics, today the system is different. So to take one example, we have the Gaokao system. So the Gaokao system is actually about college entrance. It's not about entering the government. But what we see in this system is that, is that there's a divide between the arts and the sciences or the humanities and the sciences. And so students who want to get into top universities like Peking University, they typically focus on science subjects because they have higher grades. Um, now this divide is not unique to China, of course. Uh, we see this in my home country of Australia. But this divide between the sciences and the humanities was famously described by C.P. Snow as the two cultures. And we see this is particularly pronounced in the fields of medical education in China and abroad. So one step towards bridging this divide is a course that I devised in 2015, which is called Medicine and Visual Culture. And it's taught by myself at Peking University and Vivian Lowe from the China Center for Health and Humanity at University College London. In contemporary Chinese medical education, there's a growing recognition of the role of medical humanities that is leading to further economic investment and integration into the existing curriculum by means of compulsory and elective courses. So compulsory courses include things like bioethics and, and health law, but uh, courses such as mine are still on the elective list. So Peking University has taken the lead on implementing medical humanities and health humanities programs that are designed to address the social contexts of illness and provide a practical training uh, framework for communication and conflict resolution. Uh, one of the major issues facing uh, healthcare in China, especially at its large hospitals, is uh, doctor-patient conflict. So medical humanities is designed to try to address some of these problems. This is just one dimension of what medical humanities is designed to do. But the intellectual and ethical framework developed at, P at Peking University is based upon uh, contemporary Chinese conceptions of medical humanities, otherwise known as yi shui ren wen. Um, but I think it also has a historical basis to it too. So I just want to elaborate briefly upon this notion of medical humanities care in a contemporary Chinese context. So in China, medical humanities or health humanities, uh, which again in Chinese is uh, yi shui ren wen, 
has uh, multiple interrelated meanings that center upon this Confucian concept of benevolence, which in Chinese is known as Ren. And Ren is variously translated as benevolence, uh, compassion, altruism, and goodness. So based on this notion of Ren, uh, my, uh, the head of my program, Guo Li Ping, she developed uh, an educational model for medical pedagogy and research that encompasses the ethical and the practical, and I've drawn upon this framework to help us uh, help students uh, have a have a better approach to understanding the ethics of care through their medical art projects. At the top of this framework, we have uh, what's what can be translated as medical humanities spirit, and this is the ultimate care for man and respect for life. Then second, we have uh, medical humanities care, meaning beneficence in medical, uh, biomedical research and healthcare. And then we have uh, medical humanities as a branch of learning, that is the interdi interdisciplinary cluster of humanities and social sciences that scrutinizes medicine from their own unique perspectives. And lastly is medical humanities competence. So this is about being able to take these benevolent actions and put them into practice in biomedical research and clinical care. So based on these principles of medical humanities care, the medical art projects are designed to bring together critical learning processes that center on understanding the world through active research, engagement, exploration, inquiry, self-expression, and communication to help, to help cultivate ethical reflection and practices. One step towards implementing this, uh, this notion of arts-based research in a Chinese medical context is this course I teach, Medical and Medicine and Visual Culture. Now this course serves to examine representations of medicine and health in the visual arts. And this is everything from anatomical drawings, paintings, photography, uh, graphic memoirs, cinema, among others. And it's both from Anglo-European and Chinese sources, so I mix them up. It's usually about 50-50, so if we're talking about films uh, that say they might have to watch one film each week, half the films would be uh, European or American, maybe Australian, some are Australian actually, and, uh, and, there, and there are also a lot of Chinese films. Uh, Chinese films are actually a fantastic source. Um, however, interestingly, students seem to be less engaged with the Chinese films than they are with uh, international films. But uh, the broad pedagogical aims of this course is to foster visual literacy. So in the beginning stages of the course, uh, we undertake really basic things that I learned in art history, which is like formal analysis and semiotics and so on. And all of this is designed to highlight the significance of visual culture in medical history and culture, as well as uh, contemporary practices and education. And all of this is to enable students to reflect upon medical issues such as the medical gaze, physicalism, diagnosis, and many, many other areas. So based on qualitative and performative research, the medical art projects have a range of aims. Uh, one of them is to de-center uh, teacher-centered pedagogy and rote memorization. So uh, in medical education, of course, this is really important and many Chinese students are very good at rote memorization. However, uh, this is an opportunity for them to, to engage in a different kind of learning. Uh, so that's why I encourage students to initiate independent research. So they get to choose the topic that they would like to research and uh, present in an artistic form. And this is also designed to increase their self-reflexivity through the process of art creation and also hopefully uh, personal knowledge. And Secondary aims would also include things like practical artistic techniques. Um, now, I'm not really concerned about the artistic quality, although there have been many fantastic artworks produced. That's not really the focus of this course. Um, but it is also uh, ho hoped that students will inc that they will be able to better engage with each other, so it, it promotes better interpersonal and organizational skills. But all of this is within this broader framework of medical humanities care. So the medical art projects are intended to disrupt established pedagogical practices in Chinese med medical education, not just Chinese, but I think you can look at this in, in other cultures as well, other countries as well, to produce new forms of explicit and tacit knowledge based on four key dimensions. 
that is interpersonal. So this is based upon their own personal experiences, but also their own self-reflexivity and uh, you know, autodidacticism. There's also the intellectual dimension, which is about developing their analytical and problem-solving skills. There's also the practical dimension, which is about the praxis of art creation. You know, how do we make this artwork? You know, do we take photos? Do we take drawings? Uh, do we make drawings? How do we go about this? And then there's also, of course, the social dimension, which is about the ethical and cultural aspects. So in small groups, students are required to create a work of art in any visual medium. It's up to them to choose. And they can examine any aspect of disease, healing and health. So given that the medical art projects require a range of skills from praxis to exegesis, students tend to distribute the skills base. Uh, to date, students have worked in a very wide range of mediums, everything from documentaries, short films, uh, photography, oil paintings, sand paintings, uh, comics and sculptures, among others. And the research underpinning many of these medical art projects are based on students' real-world experiences at intern, as interns in hospitals or you know, based upon their interactions in just in our local environment. So uh, where Peking University is, uh, Peking University Health Science Centre is, um, there are a range of hospitals, uh, mental institutions and so on. And so, you know, I live there and so every day we, we see, you know, patients on the street, uh, families, you know, mourning for their lost relatives. So it's, it's you don't have to go far out of our own uh, area to, to, to see uh, a range of health-related issues being played out in real life. Uh, now, that said, some students will also maybe explore health issues in more abstract terms as well. Um, but to give you some examples, uh, one group drew upon the experiences of procrastination. This is very common among students uh, in China. I assume it's elsewhere as well. Um, another also used the, so in this case they used this project to uh, to reflect upon the condition. You know, what are the causes of it? Uh, how does it how, how does it affect their education? How does it affect their outcomes? How does it affect them physically and psychologically and so on? So this is just one example. There are many, many others. But the aim of the project is not really to turn students into artists. Rather, the project is designed to give them an opportunity to explore new modes of research and learning in, by engaging in creative and reflective practices with this broad aim of humanizing the practice of medicine in China. So next what I would like to do is actually to show you two projects uh, and you will hear in the students' own words uh, a little bit about their own thoughts and, and experiences going through this process of creating their medical art projects. Art allows us to think in a completely different way. It not only broadens our horizon, but also provides hints or ideas for scientific discoveries. If parents and teachers can gradually be aware of the advantages of art, children can actually have a more healthy environment of making art. For our art project, we started with the idea that many people are afraid of their own body parts. Therefore, we wanted our works to ease their terror. We think that ignorance of the structure and function of the body contributes to this fear. So we seek to find ways to show bodily organs as beautiful and complex. Art always has a strong visual impact. Thus, it can create more drastic and more lasting memory, forcing us to pay attention to a subject and think about the topics related to illness, healing, and health. Art is an effective media to review the existence of unsolved problems. For example, mysteries related to the mind, from psychology to mental disorders, can be effectively conveyed via image, especially when sometimes it is hard to understand via words. An interesting interaction between art and medicine is that we may use cognitive neuroscience to analysis the physiological changes in one's brain when he or she faced with artworks. Meanwhile, we can also use artworks to advocate for a broader impact of the medical knowledge, researches, and issues. In my work, the concept persona 
is raised by psychologist Ka Yun, referring to the individual system of adaptation to, or the manner he assumes in dealing with the world. Here, we interpret persona as a public image of man, which is the result of social adaptation. For the media of the work, we chose photography, since photo itself, similar to mirrors, has a role of enhancing self-awareness, which somehow helped to form the persona. Inspired by a Chinese artist Zeng Fanzhi's work, we use a monk mask as a metaphor of persona. Also, colorful neon lights are used to render a nervous atmosphere. And to cast an unconventional perspective on our daily scene, which is the school's dining hall. In summary, this project aimed to show the contradiction between the original self and persona, in order to reveal the need from a historical a perspective. The medical them. art projects might be considered a return to this system of learning in China that integrates art-based practice with the study of medicine and ethics. So today. Uh, medical students in mainland China, else as elsewhere,、uh, are primarily trained to understand the biological, physiological, and psychophysiological aspects of of the body and disease. Yet they pay very little attention to the personal, social, cultural, and historical dimensions of experiencing illness. So the medical art projects signal a possible shift in pedagogy and research in mainland Chinese medical education, where It's about all. It's it's really about augmenting the disease-based model of medicine by encouraging students to use art as a means of researching and representing the socio-cultural and humanistic aspects of healthcare. So, together with problem-based learning programs offered at Peking University, the medical art projects augment both the theoretical and practical knowledge、uh, by offering students the opportunity to learn through new or unfamiliar skill unfamiliar skill sets. In this case, the arts. So, as an experimental arts-based project, the, the medical art projects offer tremendous potential to engage students in innovative acts of learning in medical education. As one student states, "Art inspires me to take more research on illness, healing, and health."